Interesting. Patient no-shows. Cancellations still biggest hurdle for now practice schedules. And it goes into the detail to talk about how the no-shows and can cancellations are affecting the dental practices. And um, so they have 800 people to respond to the survey and patient no-shows and cancellations less than 24 hours before their appointment is 81.3%, which I thought that was pretty high number. Patients no-shows and cancellations more than 24 hours before the, their appointment is 45%. Not enough patients making appointments, 37.9%. Trouble filling vacant st staff positions, 33%. Other 6.9 and COVID is 4.1%. So I'm curious, Brian, let's start with you if you don't mind. Does the number 81.3% relates to what you've seen? And is it because people just reschedule or there's a, there's a, some other problems going on with that? Yeah, 81.3% is huge. That's a huge number. But you're saying 81.3% um, of the cancellations are less than 24 hours. Oh, um, no, that would make sense then. That's a good correction. That, that most of yes, your, it's not that 81.3% yeah. people cancel. It's just out of all the cancellations. That's a great point. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would, I would definitely say I, it's also probably depends on how you consider like a canceled appointment. Um, if so, you know, we would in, in in our group of offices would say that 48 hours is when we want to know. And so anything prior to 48 hours is not even registered as like a cancellation or anything like that, because we're asking for that. They give us the same. Um, but I would say the majority of them are, are uh, you know, less than 24 hours. I'd be interested to see what the breakdown is then between what type of patient it is. Is it an existing patient or a new patient? Um, I think new patients are the most likely to um, cancel. And I think it's probably because they have no connection to your office whatsoever. You know, like once once people are in the office and they get to know you and you've kind of established a connection, I think it's harder for them to just be like, screw you, I'm not coming in. Um, and then I'd also be interested on how they're doing it. You know, like there's so many platforms out there now where you can, ZocDoc, for instance, where you can just create an appointment. Um it means nothing to cancel it because it's just an app to them, right? It's not an office with people in it that have a schedule or anything like that. Um, but I also think it's interesting that the I would say the second, in my experience, group of people to no show are emergency patients, which are always funny to me. They call you the night before and they're like, I'm having an emergency. And we're like, dude, we'll get you in first thing in the morning. And then they don't show up. What was that emergency? <laughs> That's um, interesting. But yeah, I would, I love when people call as an emergency, but they're like, I want to come in next Thursday. And I'm like, you're having an emergency <laughs> next Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Dude, you see the future. Um, but I think that's, I think that's pretty accurate. Um, not enough patients making appointments. I don't know what that means. Um, trouble filling vacant staff positions. I think we beat that horse to death last week, but, um, or last month, but I don't know why that results in. No, no shows or cancellations. Yeah, yeah. Can I yeah, if you don't dive mind. in? Yeah. Sorry. Cool. Let's go, Ashley. Yep. Well, so I'm just going off the title here. Patient no shows, cancellations, still biggest hurdle for dental practice schedules. My thought is, well, duh. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, of course, the like people not showing up is going to be the the biggest hurdle. But it goes back to, you know, I'm really also glad you made that correction, Aaron, because I was like, holy shit, 81 percent of people are canceling. Yeah. That's insane. But um, anyway, but uh, like, obviously, I mean, anytime you have any type of uh, option or room for human error, like somebody's forgetting appointments, there's, you know, a kid got sick, the they just for, you know, just forgot, like, it's, of course, going to be a, a hurdle you have to deal with. And so it's about having good systems in place. And it's about making sure that you are reminding people I forget appointments you know what I mean like I missed an appointment with my hairdresser but she you know now texts me the night before like hey just reminder we'll see you at eight o'clock tomorrow oh awesome that's super helpful you know to get things at the top of people's minds especially when um dental appointments hygiene appointments are getting scheduled six months out there's no way I'm going to remember an appointment in six months it's just not feasible yeah that's to that point. point it's also like what is the it this is so multifactorial. What's the like uh, protocol that you're using, right? Like if you just wait till right. the night before to to notify someone that they have an appointment, the chances of them not coming in is pretty high. 
if you right. let them know two weeks ahead of time and then maybe a few days ahead of time when I had the office in New York, uh, two hours ahead of time. And like, people are always like, dude, thanks for that text. I was like diving into work and I forgot that I had the appointment. Um, so, so like, what's the protocol? Yeah. yeah I was say, and Aaron, I, I had, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'll ask my question. Yeah. I, go ahead. I, I said, uh, um, I had an appointment today to talk to somebody about doing some stuff. We were going to meet on a zoom meeting. I set it up, uh, two days ago. They, they sent me a confirmation immediately. This is two days ago. They sent me a confirmation immediately. They sent me a confirmation the next day. They sent me a confirmation two hours before the appointment. They send me a confirmation 10 minutes before the appointment. So that's four confirmations on an appointment that was made two days ago. Now we make a six month appointment and how many confirmations are we, are we sending out? And now we have all these, you know, automated systems that they'll just automatically like kick that thing out. and. And you definitely get to choose, like, what's your, you know, how, how frequently do you want patients to get that? And I just think that we get so much stuff on um, email and on text and et cetera, et cetera, that where we're like, oh, we don't want to upset our patients. I'm like, they're not upset. They get this stuff all the time. It's it at one point, it may have been a big deal when it first started coming out. But these days you just it's like delete, delete. Sure. Yeah, I got it. I got it. And to your point, Brian. We had a patient, like we would send it to him like an hour before and they were like, oh, thanks so much. Like I was in work and I was working on this project and I completely forgot that I had to come in and see you guys today. So, and you get the yeah. ones that I always find it funny. The ones that are like, oh my God, you send so many reminders. And I'm like, and you're still half an hour late. Yeah. yeah. Like you're complaining about the reminders. <clears throat> yeah. But also, have you, have you ever made an appointment in an office? You're, you're going to have to go there. And somewhere like a week ahead of time, you realize, oh, I need to call them up and I need to cancel or move my appointment. And then because this happened to me and, and like a week ahead of time, I'm like, OK, I need to give them a call. So after about a couple, three days, I'm like, oh, I really should give them a call. So then we got to the week. Of, I was like, oh, I need to give them a call two days before. Oh, I need to give them a call the day before. I'm like, oh, I better call them because otherwise, like they're going to hold this spot open. And I called that morning. You know, and it's like, I totally get how this happens. It's in their head. They know they have to do it and they, and they just keep forgetting it. Um, I hope your dentist is listening. You just got blackballed. Yeah. It wasn't a dental appointment. It was a a (laughs) physician, but I was just like, you know, this is how it happened. Like when I did it, I'm like, this is exactly how it happens. Cause you just don't, it's not number one priority for you at all. Yeah. Yeah. So I would think if you were sending out things, if you're sending out things to remind them and give them the option to reschedule seems like you would have less of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I keep trying to ask this question. I, I wonder if, if these automated reminders, we're losing the personal touch. Like my dentist, if a bunch of emails, obviously like that's fine. Now you, you're you cluttering my text messages, which was my sacred place before. Like I would not allow anybody to text me anything, but now it's like a bunch of companies texting random stuff. But if they call and if I say yes, I'm going to show up. Like, is there, is there something in there? For me, if you call me and I have to talk to a human, I'm annoyed. Like, just send me the thing. I said, I'd be there. I'll I'll be there. I also am not going to answer phone numbers. I don't know. So if like, I don't have it saved as like my dentist. Yeah. I'm not picking it up. I don't even check those voicemails. I mean, I don't check. I'm not quite that bad. It's it's full. All right. So I think another problem. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, I was just going to say, if you can scroll down just a little, I, why aren't we talking about this one? Attempted murder. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is going on in Tennessee? <laughs> there was a dentist that there was a dentist, two dentists. One was killed. One was shot in like an hour outside of, of like Austin. I think it was last year because someone was wow. upset about their billing. Wow. I actually, maybe it's just something recent, but it, we can talk about it, uh, on the, on the, on the next one, or if we, if we get through the list, but, um, uh, I wanted to touch base on, um, I mean, we, obviously we talked about a trouble filling vacant staff positions, but I wonder how did they connect it back to the headline of patient no shows? Like, I feel like trouble filling vacant staff positions, 33.1% has nothing to do with the headline. I think what they're I mean, saying is maybe. that the biggest hurdles for practice schedules, it, the first one is no-shows, the second one is no-shows, 
And then the third reason is not enough patients making the appointments. I think it's just a list of hurdles for the dental practice schedule. No, so, so yeah. trouble. So, if you go back to the, the actual article, it's something from the Health Policy Institute, and you go through and you look at the questions they asked, and they don't actually connect the things together in their survey. So I guess it's something that somebody thought might be important. I mean, I would, I would say if you don't have a, a schedule coordinator whose full-time job is to keep a schedule full, then, yeah, not having someone in that position, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Ashley, what, what, what did you have? That's exactly what I was going to say was that it's about, you know, if you don't have someone in that position, then you're not going to be able to keep your schedule full. Yeah. Then let me turn around a little bit, Ashley, to you. Um, you're, you're a GSD queen, right? We, if I would have this problem, if I would be Dr. Aaron, I would call Ashley and I would say, Ashley, I actually have a problem. Patient no-shows cancellations is my biggest hurdle for dental practice schedules. Can you help me? What would you do? Yeah, and going back to the original thing, I would want to know what system is in place. You know, how are you doing follow-ups? How are you touching base with your with your patients? You know, what, um, you know, to that point too, I can't remember if it was Brian or Aaron, but, um, you know, are you sending the text message just the night before? Or are you sending it, you know, do you have a policy leading up to these? Like uh, Aaron mentioned to make sure that uh, you're touching base multiple times instead of, <clears throat> just uh just the one time um you know that's where i would start um and it's probably um the biggest thing is that people just forget right and what would be the that's reasonable interesting. time and, and the reasonable number actually for you to get it down to i don't know whatever like if you would be tasked uh, with this project how would you tackle it to be honest i don't know like that i have that like expertise in it. I'm going to be looking at different uh, softwares and seeing what they recommend, um, you know, because they're the ones who have the data. They're the ones who have, um, you know, seen the results. And maybe it's something like Weave or Flex or, um, you know, whatever software is out there that they're using. There's there's a ton of options. But I mean, I think it's don't assume that you know the answer to that. It's, you know, let's go where the data is and where um, the the people who are doing this, ask those as experts. My, my job as GSD queen and getting shit done is usually to find somebody who um, knows what they're doing better than I do. Yeah, you that's know, super also, cool, Brian. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, I was just gonna say, I would wanna break it down into existing patients and new patients and see where the issue mm -hmm. is. Um, because I think those are two two se totally separate things. It's it, it, it may sound cold, but it's like if you have patients come in and they're new patients and then they're not scheduling with you, um, you're fucking up somewhere. Like they're not mm -hmm. they're not making your team is not making a connection. You're not making the right impression. So they like come in as a new patient and then they're like this isn't good and they're gonna leave. If it's if it's new patients then I would want to know, like, are they doing it on a platform like a ZocDoc or something like that? Or are they calling in? Um, but then I'd be looking at, like, what are what are my reviews? Like, maybe someone told them, you know, this is where I go. You should make an appointment. So they call and they make an appointment and then they start looking at your website or they start looking at your reviews and they're like, ooh, never mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Karen, I think you had something to add. Yeah, the thing I was going to say to you is you, you asked, are we losing the personal touch? And, and I think before and because it's becoming so common, and especially since COVID, that getting automatic reminders, I don't think you're losing the personal touch at all. Um, although I do think that once they get in the door, if they're not happy with what's going on, you're going to lose them pretty quick. But typically, I, I think that as long as you're communicating with them, they're they're fairly happy about that. And I haven't seen a patient come in and be irate about the number of text messages they've gotten for more than five years. And when we first started doing that kind of thing, oh my gosh, people would just be so upset that you you send them a mail or, or you send them an email or you send them two or three texts. And now it's just so common. I just don't think it's a big deal at all. 